I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 26. In Exodus 26, we are looking at the instructions that God gives to Moses regarding the construction of the tabernacle. And uh, we've been looking at the curtains, excuse me, like he gives for a covering here. And we began looking in verses 1 through 6 yesterday. And let's read those verses and continue looking at them today. In Exodus 26, verse 1. It says, Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits and the breadth of one curtain four cubits and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the salvage and the coupling and likewise shalt thou make it in the uttermost edge of the of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shalt thou make in the one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold one of another. And thou shalt make fifty tashes of gold, and couple the curtains together with the tashes, and it shall be one tabernacle. So as we come into these verses, we begin looking at this linen curtain that was mentioned in verse 1. And we've seen several things about the linen curtain, which pictures for us the holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, now we want to see the colors here in verse 1, where it talks about, it says, Moreover, thou shalt take the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet with the cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. So here we see blue and purple and scarlet mentioned. Of course, blue is the color of heaven. Purple is the color of royalty and scarlet is the color of blood and white tells of righteousness and all of those things point toward the Lord Jesus Christ. It is interesting for us to note that blue and purple and scarlet are actually found 24 times together in the book of Exodus. You will also remember that the priestly garments also contain the colors of blue and purple and scarlet. We see that in Exodus chapter 28. And in verses 5 and 6, it says, And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen, and they, and they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue and of purple and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen with cunning work. We also see in verse 2 that the dimensions of each panel of the curtains was notice what it says in verse 2 the length of one curtain shall be 8 and 20 cubits and the breadth of one curtain 4 cubits and every one of the curtains shall have one measure so we see there that first of all he tells him that every one of the curtains that are going to be constructed excuse me today every one of the curtains that is going to be constructed all has one measure and that measure is about 42 feet long by 6 foot in width when you do the conversion between the cubits to feet. And the whole curtain was going to be about 42 feet by 60 feet. And then notice the cherubim in verse 1. It says, With cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. Uh, these cherubims are probably the same as the living creatures of, of Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 5 through 11. And these beautiful colors were used in embroidering the cherubim on white linen. They, these cherubim symbolize the presence of God. Every time you see the cherubim, we are reminded of the presence of God. And as we look at the tabernacle, we understand that the priests were on the inside serving, and they were constantly reminded that God was watching them. Uh, over and over again, let me just give you some examples in the book of Psalms. In Psalm 61, and in verse 4, it says this, it says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. So he says, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. Then in Psalm 91, and in verse 4, we find the psalmist says this. It says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. So it reminds us here of the presence of God. In Psalm chapter 17, and in verse 8, It says this, 
It says, keep me as the apple of thy eye, hide me under the shadow of thy wing. So once again, we see the wing of God is that place of protection and understanding that the reason that he's able to protect us is because he is watching over us. In Psalm 36 and verse 7, it says, How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God! Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. And of course, this is typical language here showing us of the protective care of God in our lives. In Psalm 57 and in verse 1, it says there, be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So here we see the wings of God being pictured. Uh, as we think about the wings of these cherubim, it reminds us of the presence of God and God watching over us. And friends, we need to be thankful that we serve a God that watches over us, that we serve a God that knows exactly what we're going through, that knows exactly where we are, and knows exactly what we're facing. What a comforting thought that is to understand that the eyes of the Lord are always upon us and that he knows exactly what we're going through and that he knows exactly what we need. But at the same time, it's a very sobering thought because it's a simple reminder that the eyes of the Lord are always upon us. It matters not where we are. It matters not where what we are doing. God knows. God sees exactly what it is that we are doing. Then as we look at verses 3 through 6 here, we see that it talks about loops of blue and tashes of gold. Notice as we come back to Exodus chapter 26. And in verse 3, it says, The five curtains shall be coupled, or that word coupled very simply means joined together one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another, and thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the salvage and the coupling, and likewise thou shalt make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shalt thou make in the one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second that the loops may take hold one of another. And thou shalt make fifty tashes, and the word tashes here simply means devices for fastening two parts together. Thou shalt take fifty tashes of gold and couple the curtains together with the tashes, and it shall be one tabernacle. So all of these pieces were being hooked together in order to make one tabernacle. A tash was a hook, and the salvage was the extreme end. And the Bible tells us here that these tashes unite the curtains. And as we stop and we think about that, they typify Christ's unity with the Father and with his people. And praise God, friends, that he also unites the Father and redeemed man to himself. It is because of the Lord Jesus Christ that we are united together. It is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that brings us together. And we need to praise God for the unity that we have. Praise God that we are united to him and that we are able to fellowship with him. And so this this is a basic understanding of, of this linen curtains that we're seeing here. And now as we come back together in the next day and we continue to study this, we're going to see this curtain of goat's hair that is mentioned in verses 7 through 13 of Exodus chapter 26. So I encourage you to take those verses, to read through those verses, and to allow the Holy Spirit of God to teach you. And the next time we come together, we will look at these curtains of goat's hair. And what a wonderful blessing it is that we can learn from these curtains more about the Lord Jesus Christ. We can learn more about God and his care and his connectivity in our lives. And may we praise God for all that he has done for us. Have a great day.